The UK government, along with various other national and local governments, has been promoting more inter-organizational collaboration in the emergency service sector. There are a variety of different and innovative initiatives, both bottom-up and top-down, which promote police, fire and ambulance services to work together more effectively and efficiently. These initiatives vary across localities and are motivated by a number of factors. Some initiatives leverage new information and communication technologies to streamline operations, while others entail new collaborative organizational forms. Many involve a combination of various new structures and ways of working in terms of technology, process, service, and organization. This module outlines a few of the most notable initiatives. Incident command systems provide a standardized approach to the coordination and command of emergency response. Harsh wildfires in California in 1970 compelled local, state, and federal agencies to streamline their response efforts through common language, management concepts, and communication. They developed a system through which authority could be temporarily centralized in order to direct disparate organizations, leading to a more coordinated and efficient response effort. The system was soon adopted outside of the California wildfire context and prepared for a number of emergency scenarios and networks of response organizations. Today, countries have developed various national and regional incident command systems of their own. To foster better coordination and shared organizational learning among the emergency services, many localities and regions develop joint training programs and simulation exercises. There are different types of training methods of varying complexity, cost, purpose, and effectiveness. These range from seminars, workshops, and tabletops to drills, functional exercises, and full-scale exercises. Today, the value of conducting exercises and simulations is highlighted in most textbooks on disaster and crisis management, and mandated by legislation and executive rules in connection with a variety of natural and technological threats in most industrialized nations. In some countries, there are examples of more integrated education initiatives among the different emergency service organizations. Rather than the sporadic joint simulations, first responders receive joint training at purpose-built facilities or colleges alongside one another. A prime example of this is Singapore's Home Team Academy. Established in 2006, the Home Team Academy is a branch of the Ministry of Home Affairs and has a number of core functions, including corporate services and joint training across the emergency service agencies and other relevant safety and security organizations. The UK's Joint Emergency Service Interoperability Principles is another noteworthy joint training initiative, which has implemented a nationwide joint training strategy for all levels of command. Co-location has become a common way in which emergency services are working more closely together, although it is certainly not a novel arrangement. Co-location entails the sharing of buildings and physical sites by two or more of the emergency services. It can also imply a temporary co-location of emergency responders throughout the management of a multi-agency crisis situation. This section focuses on the former. There are various ways that the emergency services have chosen to co-locate. Common examples of co-location are joint emergency control rooms or centers, which house all emergency call dispatchers under one roof. More ambitious examples of co-location include the development of the Emergency Service Hub, Poynton Emergency Service Hub in the UK, which opened in 2014, offers police a modern facility and central location alongside the Cheshire Fire and Rescue Service and the Northwest Ambulance Service. In addition to co-location, some departments are teaming up to respond to emergencies together. Co-response typically refers to schemes where firefighters respond to emergency medical calls on behalf of ambulance services when needed. There are other, more novel examples of co-response schemes in the UK, including London's Joint Response Unit and Greater Manchester's Community and Risk Intervention Teams. The main functions of emergency service organizations are supported by extensive back office functions or support services, including information and communication technology development and maintenance, human resource management, equipment and vehicle procurement, estates and facilities management and vehicle maintenance, to name a few. The Emergency Services Collaboration Working Group has highlighted a number of regions in England and Wales in which the emergency services are merging back office functions. These efforts are often alongside co-location arrangements. 
Surrey, for example, is piloting the multi-agency information transfer program, aimed at reducing the call transfer time between emergency services. On the 1st of February 2014, the H3 Legal Partnership in Hampshire was established to share corporate resources between the Police, Fire and County Council. New developments include an integrated business centre, which will provide transactional services, procurement, occupational health, property services and facilities management. Examples of collaboration, such as co-location, joint protocols and joint training, still imply an organisational distinction between the different emergency services. There are some examples of departments moving to fully consolidate their emergency services into one multifunctional department. Scholars have outlined four forms of public safety consolidation, nominal, functional, partial and full. With nominal consolidation, the least integrated of the forms, services are not integrated and there are no cross-trained public safety officers. Nevertheless, separate services may share facilities or training and dispatch resources, and a public safety director may oversee separate services. With functional consolidation, departments remain separate, and consolidation only occurs at the middle or upper management level. Partial consolidation implies the development of cross-trained public safety officers, working alongside traditionally separated personnel with consolidation limited only to, a select to select positions within the organization's hierarchy. Finally, with full consolidation, services are integrated with public safety officers fully cross-trained in both police and fire services under a consolidated management and command.